Hello, welcome to Lesson 19, Mastering Java. Uh, here we're finally going to close the discussion on strings in Java with a very, very important topic, and that is how do we get keyboard input from a user uh, when they type a string in. We've already used the scanner method in lessons long time ago to read integers in and decimals in and things like that and use them in our program and it's made our programming richer. But what if they want to type in a sentence or what if we want to type in a word? What if we're building that database that we keep talking about over and over again? How do we read strings in from the keyboard? So it's very important to understand how to do that and we had to kind of delay discussion of that until now because you didn't even know what a string was until now. Well, it turns out the scanner method that we've been always using over and over again to get keyboard input is available to be used to read in uh, strings as well. So let me just demonstrate how to do that. Uh, if you've never used the scanner uh, method up till now, you need to go back to my previous lessons that I've, I've, I've talked a lot about what's happening here with the scanner method in previous volumes of Mastering Java. We've used it a lot. We just haven't used it uh, thus far with strings because I wanted to get up to get you up to speed in terms of what strings are. But in any case, what we always do when we use the scanner method to read the keyboard is we import uh, java.util.scanner with a capital S. And we put a semicolon there. And that is printed and typed in outside of the class definition for our particular program. So inside, there's a couple of things that we need. First of all, we need to create a string to hold the keyboard input. So I'm going to call this string, and I'm going to call it str. And I can just initialize it to whatever I want, but I'm going to initialize it to kind of an empty string. So this is double quotation with nothing in there, and that means that I've created it. I've kind of put no characters in there, but I've created the string. This is going to be what's going to hold whatever I type in. The next thing I need to do is create an actual scanner object to read the keyboard. This thing up here just makes it available for use. I need to create a scanner object and now that you know what object oriented programming is, and since we've done that as well, you know now what's happening. We type scanner, uh, I need to create an object. So I'm going to name that object input because I'm reading input from the keyboard. I can name it anything I want. And on the right hand side, I'm going to say new scanner. Basically, it's saying, hey, create a new scanner object. And as part of the constructor, I need to tell scanner where am I going to read this information from. And so I'm going to read it from system.in, which on a typical computer that you're using is going to be the default keyboard, right? Theoretically, scanner could read input from different locations, but I'm going to read it in from the regular keyboard. I'm creating a scanner object, I'm naming it input. That's the interface to the scanner system I'm going to use, and the new keyword over here is creating that new object of type scanner. All right, so I've created the scanner object. I've created a string that's empty that hopefully will hold my keyboard input. So let's print something to the screen to invite someone to type in a phrase of some sort. So we'll just say system.out.println. We can put anything here. I could say enter your full name, right? And then we'll just go ahead and put a semicolon there. So this is going to print to the screen and ask someone to politely enter their name. So let's try to read that name in, in terms of a string. Now we've used the scanner before to read next integer, next double, and things like that from the keyboard. What we need to do now is whatever we get from scanner is going to be assigned into the string that we've just created. So we say str is equal to the scanner object that we have input. Now let's access the methods associated with that. So we hit the period, and these are all the methods associated with the scanner object, right? There's lots of different options here. We've used some of them before to read integers. We're going to use the one that says next line. It's very common. It's at the top, next line. We don't have to give it any parameters. We just hit a semicolon like that. What's, what is happening here is we have a scanner object named input. We're accessing the method that's part of that uh, object called next line. The magic is happening back there. Java knows to go listen for the keyboard for a sequence of characters terminated by an enter key. When it gets that, it's going to return the entire thing as a string on the right hand side, which I'm now storing in my string that I've created. So theoretically, uh, system.out.println, if I print out str, it should contain exactly what I typed in. So let's verify that that's true. Let's go ahead and hit run. Enter your full name. So I will say Jason Gibson. That's my input. I'm going to hit enter and Jason Gibson comes back because I read the input. 
I store it in a string and I print the string out. Now, of course, I don't need to type my name. I can type whatever I want. I love hot tamales because they are very, very yummy. I'm only doing this because I want to demonstrate that it's a string you're reading. It can be several characters or just one word. I love hot tamales because they're very yummy. All right, so that's the basic idea, how you read in from the keyboard with scanner. Keep in mind that once you do the keyboard input, whatever is coming back is an entire string stored in here. So you may have a, a, a you know, an entire program built around reading text from the keyboard, and then once you have it read into this string object here, you can do anything you want with it that's legal. I could convert this to uppercase or lowercase. I can go read uh, characters out of this string. I can uh, replace characters. I can find the length of the string. Anything that we've done in the past that we've been operating on strings can now be done here because simply we've read from the keyboard as a string. So now you've got all the little pieces of a program that might be coming together. You can now read strings from the keyboard. You can replace things. You can um, search through them. You can compare strings. This is all the building blocks of larger uses of strings in Java where you might be building a database or an address book or even just building a report or something like that. So they're all little tiny modules that will come together to build whatever your vision is for what your program is supposed to accomplish. I'm Jason and I hope that you've enjoyed these series of lessons. We've covered a tremendous amount of material beginning with what is an array, what is a string, how do I access arrays and strings, how can we have them play nice together, how can we have arrays of string objects, how to manipulate strings. These are all incredibly fundamental things um, to any programming language and I hope that I've tried to uh, uh, encourage you to learn more because as much as I want to teach you everything, I can't teach you everything. There's too many methods, too many things out there for you to learn. I've tried to give you the high points. I've tried to give you the skills. Now it's up to you to take what I've taught you. Go out there and research additional methods. Uh, go out there and look at the documentation for other methods associated with these objects, these string objects and these arrays ob objects in Java. And at that point, you'll have a pretty good understanding about how to approach most programming tasks. We'll come out with additional lessons in the future to uh, continue your journey, but for now, enjoy strings and arrays in Java. They're very, very useful. You will use them in almost every single program that you write.